Well, here it is. The uh, Kubota D722 engine. Uh, I just went up to LA and picked this little guy up and apparently the story on this one was it had a bad piston so I don't really know what that means yet uh, but the, the crank spins pretty freely so I'm gonna pressure wash it get it all cleaned up and then bring it over to the corner over there and um, start tearing it down and see what's going on inside of it. So I washed it, pressure washed it, took the pan off and I found a rod. It's uh, It has less bearings than it should. So I'm gonna pull the bottom end apart and pull the top end apart, get the head off of this thing, pull the pistons out and uh, see what's going on there. taken the motor apart this cylinder spun a bearing uh, I thought it threw a rod but it actually didn't it just spun the bearing here I mic'd it out and I checked the tolerances on the on the crank journals here this one's about six thousandths out uh, from the other one so I'm hoping that I can have it ground uh, down ten thousandths and do um, an undersized bearing for it so just as a closer reference it's that cylinder right there okay so under here I have my my frunk my bucket right now my Home Depot bucket obviously that has to get pulled out of here once I get the engine rebuilt and ready to go I'm gonna go ahead and yank this out and there's like some little metal stuff down there that I gotta cut back out um, but after that uh, the engine's gonna sit about right here it's about 16 inches long and this area is about 27 inches long so I have roughly a foot between this radiator and the front of the of the diesel engine and so I want to put the diesel engines radiator obviously right here somewhere right here and I'm planning to keep it as far away from this one as possible because this one is actually running my 400 volt stuff so it's running the um, it's cooling cooling the DC DC the charger and the the Tesla motor in the back there and so it's got a big big loop of coolant going on and this is a stock Toyota um, radiator uh, from a four-wheel drive like you know a 90s four-wheel drive pickup and this thing this thing's incredibly oversized for running the the coolant for the charger and the DC DC and the, and the electric motor which is a good thing you know like too much coolant can't be a bad thing when it comes to this and, and I also don't have fans on it um, it just it's such a big radiator that it never has a problem again I'll go ahead and leave all this and then that second radiator is gonna probably mount as far back as I possibly can from this one because I don't want any radiant heat from this radiator getting into this and overheating the electric stuff that engine will sit you know as far back to the firewall as I possibly can get it this radiator here and then also the Kubota engine has a fan on it a mechanical fan it'll be able to pull air while it's running through its radiator but also it's going to create a negative pressure behind this radiator so it's going to always want to go that way of course and then when I'm driving it but that's the plan up here and then also I need to figure out where to put a fuel tank um, I was thinking about putting like a really thin thing in the bed but now I'm thinking if there's enough room below here that I want to put the tank down there on the i3 they, they have it in the same spot down there it's like right uh, well right there basically on the i3 and that's kind of a good spot for it so I'm gonna try to do ideally I'd want 15 gallons in this thing but if I can't get that if I can get like 10 7 or 10 or whatever it is then so be it, that's fine. But I, I, I'm hoping I can get 10 to 12 in there at least, or uh, 15, 15 would be great. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking up here. All right, well, on the engine itself, there's this uh, plate here, this guy right here. And depending on what I do, so that's another thing I was gonna talk about. I was gonna run, I was thinking about running that Tesla motor, but now 
Uh, since the last video, I've had a lot of people suggest a ton of different, you know, scenarios besides running the Tesla motor. Uh, and one of them was a uh, friend over at Brad Industries has a uh, Hyundai HSG or HGS, whatever the heck it is. Apparently it's about the size of an alternator. Uh, it's water-cooled and it sounds like it can do 400 volts. So that might be what I want to do. There's also other options you know hybrid options where there's there's generators that come off of the back of their engines so i mean there's a ton of ways i could do this and ideally i just need to make sure that i can do 14 15 kilowatts from the electric motor because this little guy can do that mechanically with diesel fuel the way that i'm going to do it is i'm going to take off this plate and match its bolt pattern and everything and then make a new plate that holds whatever the heck it is that I'm going to use over here. And then all I have to do is adapt from the back of the crank and then adapt to either a pulley if I'm running that Hyundai little thing or adapt to an electric motor directly. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, I have not, I haven't figured that part out yet because um, there's, there's a ton of options now, but luckily I have the engine now. That's settled. I just got to rebuild it and then start doing the hybrid half of it. All right, so that concludes it for this week's video. Uh, I got the engine, got it torn apart, um, got a game plan going for figuring out what to do with that. Got a game plan figured out for what I'm going to do under the hood. Um, and so now I need to really lock down what I'm going to do for the power systems. I'm going to look into that and figure out which motor I actually want to use to make this as simple and cheap as possible because I'm really concerned about actually people being able to re replicate this, what I'm doing, and hopefully, you know, make a bunch more of these little systems for, for these custom EV builds. So uh, I'm trying to keep it as cheap and easy as possible. So. We'll see how it goes and that usually means using a bunch of OEM parts. So that's it for now. Um, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one. See ya.